Welcome to Cursor Run, your technology channel. You are watching episodes on Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations from your host Rahul Sharma. In the last session, we discussed about how to get started with the development, how to use Visual Studio, what is X++, how it is connected with .NET Framework and things like that. We also discussed about variables, right? Because that's a basic thing to get started with object-oriented programming and, and we did discuss about object-oriented programming in our last session. And guys, before we continue, right, if you noticed the initial two or three sessions, I did it in Hindi, but few of you guys uh, requested that I should continue in English instead of Hindi. So I'm going forward, I'm going to do these sessions in English, but do let me know in comment sections uh, if I should continue in English or should I record separate sessions on Hindi or you guys are good with English, right? So in this session, we are going to talk about data types because we discussed variables, what is variables, right? Uh, and how to use variables, but what kind of a data you can store in a variable, right? Because variable is a basic unit where you can store any value in the memory. So let's get started with the data types. All right, so uh, data types, right? Uh, like I was saying, um, a variable's data type defines a value it may store and the operation that can be performed on it. What does it mean is, uh, if you think if you think about a variable values, right? It can be a string like my name Rahul Sharma, or it can be a um, any integer number, right? Like someone says 20 years, right? That 20 is a integer or a numeric number, right? So when you are programming something, you need to define or you need to tell the system what kind of a value you are going to store in the variable, and how do you do this? You define a variable with the data type. You say, you tell your system, right, okay, okay, I am going to define a variable called age, A-G-E, age, and that variable data type going to be integer. So system will make sure you only store integer or numeric value in this particular variable. You won't be able to store any string. If you try to store a string, it will generate a compile time or runtime error, right? In X++, there are two types of uh, variables, primitive or standard data types or composite data types, right? Primitive or standard data types are on your screen, like you can see, but there are two special data types of standard data types or primitive data types. We call it extended data types and enums. And I'll, I'm going to show you how you define these X or you can think of them as user defined data types. So your standard or primitive data types are like um, var, boolean, enum, grid, integer, integer 64, real, string, date, time of day or UTC date time. But you can define your user defined data types. Extended data types, for example, let's say in some places in uh, Dynamics 365, you want to define a variable, a string kind of a variable called name, right? And if you think about it, it could be a vendor name, it could be a sales order name, it could be a, a customer name, employee name, right? And all those names might be the same, right? At least a vendor, customer, or employee, right? Whatever the length, whatever the label, that first name, last name, those uh, data types are going to have labels or string size or anything, they are going to be same throughout the system. So instead of using a string in your table definition when you're defining your fields, uh, instead of using simple data types or standard data types or primitive data types, you use extended data types or user-defined data types. We are going to see how to use it uh, just in a moment, right? So for now, and guys, I'm going to go uh, real fast in the in this session because these are very simple things you can uh, practice on your own and I'm going to link you with some of the Microsoft uh, you know documents or Microsoft links so that you can read more about these so now before we go forward right I want to sh tell you one thing so that the concept becomes clear let me switch screen So in our last video, we discussed about variables, how to declare a variable, how to use a variable, right? In this session, we are discussing about data types. What, what is data types, right? So I already told you it defines a size in the memory, right? So for example, let's say we are declaring a variable. Of type int, and we end the statement with a semicolon. So what happens? So this is your variable name, and this is your data type okay and in the next statement let's say I want to assign some value to the, my variable so I say I want to store 10 right so what happens here is first this 
statement, right? Line one, the uh, int i is called declaring a variable, right? And this statement means assigning a value to a variable, okay? So what happens is, let's say this is your memory location, right? So when you declare a variable of, the, of for a simple data type or for a object type, right? Or for a class or table. So what system does is, i becomes your pointer to a memory location, right? A uh, some memory location, but what should be the size of uh, that memory location that def that is defined by int, right? So that's how system knows, okay, this much memory I need to save to store my integer i here. And let's say, then you need a string type of a variable as, so at this point system says, okay, as is a pointer to a memory location, right? But how much space we need? to store this string is defined by your data type. So it will reserve some space in the memory that will store our values in the variables, okay? So that's what, that's a relationship between a variable and a data type. So let's go back to the primitive data types, the types of data types we were discussing. Okay guys, uh, I'm recording this video again because somehow I recorded the 30 minutes video, but it didn't capture the audio. Uh, that's, that is what it is. So, so far what you saw is you, um, I explained you like, uh, what is the relationship between a variable uh, name and its data type, right? What is variable declaration and how do you initialize it and how it looks like in memory and things like that, right? So let's real quick, I'm, uh, now I will go a bit faster. So now uh, we know what these primitive data types, right? So primitive data types uh, and the extended data types and base enums, these two are extended data types and base enums are user defined data types based on primitive data types and primitive data types are these which are use, which you are seeing on your screen, right? Uh, let me check, uh, yes, I just wanted to make sure the mic is working. Any type? like name like name says you can store any type of variable in it right how do you d declare an any type variable so like name says any type let's say a and then i can store dan in it or or you can store some string in it okay that's fine boolean stores true or false or one or zero. One is for true, zero is for false, right? That's called boolean. Enum is a enumerated list value, a set of named constants that you can store in a variable. For example, let's say uh, we want to create an enum of called color set and it is going to store three elements, red, blue, green, right? So now this one data type denotes to three values that we can use in our fields or in our code. We will see it somewhere in our, when we will do the examples. Grid is a 32-bit hexadecimal value, a uh, unique identifier, how do you generate a unique identifier in X++? Um, I think this is the method new GUID that you can use to get new unique GUID identifier based on some logic, some business logic, okay? Now we have integer, this is 32-bit integer, this is 64-bit integer, right? Default value is always zero for integers, right? And X++ treats them as null value as well, okay? There is no such thing where you can say, okay, uh, integer i equals to null, yeah? You cannot, you can do this in, let's say, in, I think, uh, in C sharp or C++, but you cannot do this in X++. Instead of this, you will say zero and semicolon. This defines null value for integer type of variable, right? Same for integer 64. Real is for decimal points. 0.0, .0 denotes your null value. 
what kind of values you can whatever uh, decimal or real or floating values you want to store something like this something with the decimal sign a string it stores obviously it stores your characters and string there is no care like c++ everything is stored in string right and empty string like uh, uh, in integers it denotes by zero in uh, real it denotes by 0, 0.0 a, an empty string a null value is denoted by uh, single quotes or double quotes okay date stores date and null date is denoted by this particular value 1900 is year then month then date then you have time of day to store time of day then you have utc date time as well right year month day hours it stores everything in the coordinated universal time where you want to these this particular field is used where you want to store the time zone information as well okay now let's go to the composite data types composite we have two composite data types array and another one is container right so like like name says array is a data structure a data structure you guys remember what is data structures so I think uh, where it is yeah here I think in your uh, in your uh, college or in your you know uh, computer science course you must have studied about arrays lists maps sets etc right stack yeah so this is um, a data type as well in X++ where you can define array type of structure okay array type of data structure but the main important thing is it stores values of same data type yeah variables of same data type for example uh, if I want to declare an array of type integer so it means it is only going to store integer type of values so for example um, where should we see okay here so for example let's say I want to create an array of five elements of five you know uh, uh, different type of five values let's say I want to store 10 20 30 40 and 50 so the index position is 1 2 3 4 and 5th right 0 means null or a reset in x plus plus so how do i define i know i want to store integer type i can only store integer type of values if i declare it as integer right if i declare it as string i will only be able to store a string kind of values so how do you declare int data type primitive data type array name let's say array int i'm just making it up you can name whatever name you want to and then square brackets five because we want to store five elements so in the square brackets we have array size right so this is called fixed length array which can store five elements into it and what kind of data type or values it can store integer type of values right and how do you store values in it so array name and its index position i want to store on my first index position 10 like we were discussing right same way array on my second index position i want to store 20 and such that okay so this is how you declare an array of fixed size and use it right then there are few uh, uh, three types of arrays in x++ dynamic where you don't define in this case we in fixed length we define the array size in dynamic you don't define anything you don't you don't define the size you define the size when you start using it and another one is fixed length which we, uh, we discussed and then there is a partly on disk right so partly on disk think about arrays where you are storing let's say millions of values in that a particular array right maybe you only need thousand values at a time and you need to uh, take care of performance as well so in this case we can say okay we have 1 million values but at a time only load 1000 values in the memory so how do you do this with the second optional parameter in the array itself for example let's say 
integer like i was saying it in it i want to store 5000 values right five and at a time let's say load 100 values in the memory so this is the syntax for these kind of arrays and thereafter you will use it as normal fixed length or dynamic uh, array right so and what else so i already told you the index uh, where is my cursor so index begins at 1 right and we only have one dimensional array there is a trick to create multi dimensional array i'll show you the trick as well uh, what else yeah last point right to reset all elements of an array to their default values right so in our last session in our last video we discussed about uh, the default values as well right for example or if we discussed in the last slide as well right we discussed about for integer like 0 is the default value right for real 0, 0.0 right for string an empty string can be denoted by uh, this right or for date this is the uh, thing right so in order to reset for example here we were creating an array of type integer array int with five elements right and we define we assign some values into these arrays right now let's say i want to reset my array to its default value that is zero so how can i do this my array name this was my array name use the index zero and assign the default value into it right this way you reset all your array array, uh, array elements to its default value now the other complex data type of composite data type is container okay so in the array you can only store same kind of data types in container you can store any kind of values right so a container is a dynamic list where you can store primitive and composite data types right you can also store a container in the database as a field in the table what does it mean so how do you declare a, a container like this with the keyword container and this is your container name a variable name right so for example in this if we use it as a simplified way let's say on its first position i want to store color red yeah on the second position i want to add another color yeah or on the third position let's say i want to add some number because we said in the container we can store any kind of data type right any kind of primitive data type or composite data type so in this particular container we have three values at index position one we have red position two we have blue position three we have 100 stored in it right how do you fetch values for example i know on index one there is a string type value stored in it right so how do i fetch it maybe i can declare a variable and use a special function called conpeak right where the first element first parameter value is c my container name and the index i want to fetch blue yeah so that's why i'm using two so now the end result will be s will have value blue okay you understand All right and don't worry if you don't understand i'll show you i'll give you some links as well where you can read all this stuff in more details right i'll just show you after this slide and then so this is how you do uh, containers right and th there is a special syntax as well where you can fetch multiple values in one go right so we declare two variables s and i s is string integer is this and then you fetch it right and then you can also let me clean let me clean the ink first yeah then there are classes and tables which you can use as data types as well right what does it mean for example let's say you have a class called um, car right 
then in your code you can use this car as a data type right and you can initialize it with a constructor of that particular class right in this statement we are declaring a variable called c which which is of type car this is car is a class and then we initialize this variable with the keyword new which will call the constructor of this class all right same thing happens in the memory in the memory heap right c c is a pointer to a memory location right is a address pointer yeah and this when you initialize it at this point when you declare it it is just a pointer and it's it is stored somewhere in the stack that we have a pointer called c it is not pointing to any memory location or no we system hasn't assigned any memory uh, to this particular variable c now once you initialize with the constructor at this point system knows how much memory we need right in the in the in the heap right so let's say we need this memory for our object car right and at this point this c will point to this heap location all right so we can use our classes as data type as well and the same way for tables as well because tables are implemented as entities or classes now let me show you real quick some important microsoft links where you can go and read more of these and we we need to talk about uh, uh, ext uh, extended data types edts as well just give me one second so i'll put this link in the description section as well guys it is too late because i am recording it again and uh, i'm very sleepy at this point and tired so uh, primitive data types what are primitive data types how to use it the detailed definition of these uh, data types their syntaxes boolean how to use boolean how to use date right just you go through these uh, uh, these links and uh, the uh, uh, things we discussed today and then how to test this code right so you can you are seeing this code on your screen right you can copy paste you can copy this code from here and i'll show you how to use it in visual studio so that you can test your learning as well right so primitive data types composite data types we discussed about arrays we discussed about containers etc right then there are some special classes as well which did which gives us some more data structures right so uh, if you want to use array list map set struct these kind of you know data structures we have special classes for these and now let's discuss about extended data types right these are user defined data types based on primitive data types right in so for example think of it right these are user defined data types so uh, take a example of let's say first name right and we have this particular first name field or data type requirement in our employee table in our vendor table in our customer table right instead of just creating blank fields in these tables as a uh, string primitive data type we can create a user defined data type extended uh, data type based on a string and we can name it first name and we can use this particular edt in all these tables and in our code so that we don't have to you know use the plain string data type and what this does is code becomes easier to read right and reuse we can use uh, the properties set up on edt for example let's say we need first name as 60 character long right so we can use this edt in multiple locations where everything will be 60 characters long so re just read through this thing so in short edts are user defined data types right and how to create it so let's now go to visual studio and how to create your development environment how to create a new project you know how to test your code with runnable class and all that stuff we have covered these in previous videos so i'll put the links in the description and somewhere in the ibox so that you can refer them again so let's open the visual studio project for x plus plus or for finance and operations i already have this project created for previous sessions if you don't have it 
uh, uh, you can create it from scratch from here from file new or just refer the last video so how do you so this is my runnable class or my you know play area to when i am learning x plus plus you can you know just write any uh, and, uh, your code and test it from here right so for example how do you declare a variable like this you know so this particular statement says i have a variable called a which is of type int integer right same way you can declare multiple uh, variables for example we have b and let's say we have third variable called let's say result right and in the result we want to store a plus b so sorry b a plus b so this is how you, you can use so what we did we declared three variables of same type you can declare it like this or you can declare in the same line then you need to delete this and then you can start using those variables in your code okay so this is how you define the variables and all that stuff and test your code right and how do you create a edt in the application explorer if you go to the application explorer if you go to the data types you will see base enums you will see extended data types user defined data types right so for example these are multiple user defined data types that you can use in your code right and enums we already discussed like for example this particular enum just has four values like a drop down box uh, with none a b c etc so how do you create edt or user defined data type right click on your project add new item finance and operations dynamics 365 go to data types and let's say i want to create a edt of type string so i select edt string let's say we were talking about uh, first name so i'm going to create a edt called first name so that i can use this user defined data type in multiple places with same properties same labels same string size and whatever is needed add So once you add a new element, system opens a designer uh, for you. Then click on properties. Let me tag it here. Come on. So as soon as you created this EDT, you know you can see it in your project. Now you can assign. So by default it is of ten size, but let's say we want name to be sixty. Uh, characters long so you can define it in the properties now the benefit or maybe label you want to be appeared on user interface is something like this first name right first space name right so the benefit and save your project so benefit here is now you can use this user defined data type rah first name anywhere in your code or in tables right you can create this particular drag and drop this particular edt on your table and it will create a field for you we will see it in um, the further sessions the sessions we are going to do on tables and all right so this is how you create edt and you can re how do you use it simple like we were using int, uh, int you can use intellisense is not working for some reason maybe once you close visual studio and open it again or maybe compile the project you will see it but this is let's say so this is how you use your user defined data types or edits right now you can store whatever you store uh, let's say in my variable i want to store some string so whatever you type it will only store up until 60 characters right because we defined our user defined data type as 60 characters long right even if you use this user defined data type to create a field on a table that field in the database will only store 60 characters right so i hope this helped you in learning the variables and data types in x plus plus and how you can get started and play with x plus plus and start learning so i think it's a long session and, and like i said i have I had to record this thing twice 
I'm sleepy and now tired. So guys, if you like the effort and if you want to see more of this kind of content, please do subscribe the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.